Okay, let's review for our chapter one exam. This is a copy of an old exam, maybe a year or two old. Let's go over and look at all the problems. All right, all we have to do for this first one is graph this equation. Y equals negative two X squared plus nine. So we're gonna use the point plotting method, which basically means you choose a bunch of values of X, which will go from negative three down to three, the integers. Um, I should say negative three up to three, and we'll find the corresponding y values. And then we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points to graph, and we'll draw a nice smooth uh, curve through those points. So let me, let me write down up here, y is negative two x squared plus nine. So let's start at the top. Let's look at negative three. That means that y is going to be two, times negative three squared plus nine. Well, negative three squared is nine. Nine times two is 18. Uh, left off the negative two there. So it's actually negative 18 plus nine, which is negative nine. All right, well, actually, what would happen if I plug in an, a positive three? Well, the only difference would be that I'm squaring a positive three instead of a negative three. That would give me exactly the same answer if I put a plus or minus three in here. So I know that when I plug in three, I'm also gonna get a negative nine. So let's save a little bit of time. Similarly, when I plug in negative two, I'm gonna get negative two times negative two squared plus nine. Well, negative two squared is four. Four times negative two is negative eight negative eight plus nine is one. Well, likewise, if I plug in a positive two, I'm gonna get exactly the same value. So that would be a one. Now let's plug in a negative one. Negative two times negative one squared plus nine is gonna give me a one, negative one squared is one, times negative two, so negative two plus nine that's like seven, uh, nine minus two, which is seven. So if I plug a positive one in, I'm also gonna get a seven. And then if I plug in a zero, this one should be easy. If X is a zero, that whole term goes away, and the Y would just be a nine. So you can think of all these as simply ordered pairs. I guess I could put parentheses around it, but this means negative one comma seven. This is negative two comma one, negative three, comma, negative nine. So I think I'll start in the center, zero comma nine, which here's the origin, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now at one and negative one, in both cases we're gonna go up to a height of seven, one comma seven and negative one comma seven. There and there. Two and negative two both have a height or a y value of one. So two comma one and negative two comma one. And finally, the last two points are for x equal three or negative three. The height of the function is negative nine. So at three, we count down negative nine. And at negative three, we count down negative nine. Okay, so uh, it may not, it may look like this um, when, we, when, we, when we go put a smooth curve through there, it might look like it goes to a point up here, and it doesn't actually. At the very top, it's kind of flat. All right, and then the, this will actually be a mirror image on this side. Okay, that's the graph of y equals negative two x squared plus nine. All right, let's move on to the next problem. It's basically just a simple algebra problem. We'll have to use the distributive property one, two, three times. And make sure we don't mess up any signs when you have a negative number like negative four times both of these. It's negative four times x, negative four times negative three and so on. So let's just use first step one Let's just do the distributive property. 
three times. So 3x plus 9 minus 4x plus 12 is equal to 5x. Now we distribute this minus. It's like having a minus 1 times everything in parentheses. Minus 50 plus x. All right, well, let's simplify each side individually, where we'll have, let's see, that would be a, neg that'd be a 3x and minus 4x would be a negative x. And then the two numbers add up to 12 and 9, or 21. Equals, this side, I'm going to add 1x and 5x to get 6x minus 50. All right, I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. I could add x to both sides, but I like to get x's on the left, just a personal preference. So I'm going to do a minus 6x, a minus 6x. And at the same time, I'm going to do two things in one step. I know I need to get rid of this 21 as well, so I'm going to do a minus 21 and a minus 21, only since I'm running out of room. All right, so that cancels giving us a negative 7x, and that cancels, leaving us with a negative 71. So if we divide both sides by negative 7, we're done. That cancels, so x is equal to negative 71 over 7. An ugly answer and one that I don't want to plug in to verify. You can do that if you'd like. But negative 71 over 70 is the answer. All right, well, I don't, one more problem on this page. Um, I'm going to use a different color here. This is called a rational equation. It has fractions in it. And what I'm going to do in one step, I'm going to clear the fractions out by multiplying the entire equation by the least common denominator of all the fractions. And well, this negative five is like minus five over one, so we don't need to worry about that. We have a two here and a six here. So the LCD, least common denominator, is gonna be six. So I'm gonna multiply it by six, or six over one, all three terms. So now, this two is gonna cancel with the six. 6 over 2, leaving a 3 on top. So 3 times 3x. So we'll get 3 times 3x equals. This 6 is going to cancel out with that 6, leaving us just 5x on its own. And then negative 5 times 6, minus 30. So this becomes 9x equals 5x minus 30. Subtracting 5x from both sides gives us 4x equals negative 30. And we divide by 4 to get the final answer. And that means that x is equal to, let's see, this can be reduced a little bit. Negative 30 over 4 could be negative 15 over 2. All right, that's the first page of the exam.